Okay, so the car is moving over a valley. So if this is our little hill, then the car at the bottom point might look like something like this, where its wheels are on either end of the valley, and then the car is up here. I'm not very good at drawing cars. But to show off the forces acting on the car, its weight is coming downwards. We're basically just drawing a free body diagram now. And weight is the mass times the gravitational acceleration, g. And then there is also the normal force acting upwards on the car from the ground of the valley. So force normal. So let's apply Newton's second law to this. The net force is equal to the sum of the forces, which according to our diagram is the normal force pointing upwards and plus the weight pointing downwards in the opposite directions. So we'll make it negative. And according to Newton's second law, whatever the net force is, is equal to the mass times acceleration. So this is equal to ma. Now there are a couple ways we can rewrite this equation. First off, the problem specifically tells us that at the bottom, the normal force is twice the weight of the car. So the normal force can be written as 2 times mg minus mg, except we've got 2mg minus mg. So we can just factor that out, and we just have 1mg, which is equal to ma. And another way we can rewrite this is to recognize that since the car is moving in a circular path, there is a centripetal acceleration there due to the circular motion. And remember that the formula for centripetal acceleration is the square of the speed divided by the radius of the curvature, r. So we're trying to solve for the speed, v. And we can cancel out the m's because that's in both parts of the equation. So now the equation we have is that the gravitational acceleration is equal to v squared divided by r. And since we're trying to solve for v, we can rewrite this equation to algebraically solve for v. And we can do that pretty simply by multiplying both sides of the equation by r, so that v squared is equal to rg. And then taking the square root of both sides, we find that v is equal to the square root of rg. So that's our final formula. So now let's plug in the values we were given. So r has a value of 115 meters, and g has a value of 9.8 meters per second squared. And this is all underneath a square root. And if we put this into a calculator, then we find a speed of about 34 meters per second. And that is it for this problem. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please consider subscribing or donating to my Patreon, as that'll help me out in making more videos just like this. If you have a request or a question, leave a comment down below, and I hope you all have a lovely day. Bye-bye.